today I'm going to be looking at if the person on your mind is thinking about you today and what they're thinking. So I know a lot of people do these readings and they'll say, are they thinking about you? And the answer is always yes. I want to take a look at if they truly are thinking about you. And if not, we'll see what they are thinking about. And if they are, then there are thoughts of you today. I have three piles. Pile one is going to be 17 Ballroom of Echoes. Pile two is 13 Architect of the Unseen. Then I have pile three, number 18, floating in the storm. And for pile one is the room, Jera. Pile two is the room, Uruz. And pile three is the room, Hagalaz. So take a minute, try to find a quiet space if possible, take a few deep breaths, think about this person on your mind, connect to their energy, grab a cup of tea or coffee, maybe a dog or a cat if you're at home, and I will see you at your pile. Hey Pile One, you picked the Ballroom of Echoes and the Rune Jera. So a little bit about this Rune. This is talking about harvest and the results of previous efforts. It's a time of fertility. That could be in creativity. That could be in a birth. That could be in abundance in different forms. A time of peace, hope, this could be a breakthrough after stagnation. When it comes to love, this could be talking again of fertility, of things improving with another person, of fate, of things that have ended beginning again. This Ballroom of Echoes card, number 17, 17 in the Major Arcana is connected to this star. This is talking about a wound needing to be healed, like an old unhealed wound that can become gangrenous, retaining poison, retaining toxins. I did a paper in middle school on Civil War um, health, like medical care in the Civil War, and I think it was seventh grade, and I remember talking about how people would have their limbs cut off because they had become infected from a wound and would c develop gangrene, and this is kind of what that feels like. There's a wound that has been overlooked or ignored. This person is feeling ill, is feeling grief, is feeling fragmented from this wound that has become gangrenous, that has retained some poison because it has been ignored. And this pain is returning in force. So I do believe this person is thinking of you, but we will get into some tarot cards. Whatever this wound is, they are looking at old negative patterns that they have repeated perhaps many times. This could be patterns of avoidance, patterns of fear, of self-sabotage, 
of impulsive or reckless behavior. They didn't perhaps learn the first one or two or three times. And there is this possibility that they're fearing that they may lose you. So this is something that they need to address. They need to take accountability. Something is either it's a fear of losing you or this is something within them or it could be a mix of things where they fear the sickness that is being brought on. This could be mental health issues. This could be physical illness because of wounds not being addressed. They may feel they need to communicate. So that the pain can be processed before this wound continues to get more infected and this part of them is lost forever like a limb being cut from their body it's like perhaps their heart feels like it is being torn from them so let's take a look at the tarot and see if they are thinking of you today and this doesn't mean that they're never thinking of you, but are they thinking of you today? Daughter or the Page of Wands. The Eight of Cups in the Reverse. The Daughter of Cups or the Page of Cups in the Reverse. Death in the Reverse. Temperance, Sagittarius, the star, Aquarius, they are definitely thinking about you. Bottom of the deck, the two of swords, they don't really know. Okay, so their thoughts of you today, they're thinking of you. I feel like these are thoughts that they've had on repeat. For several days, months, or longer. They've been thinking about how they perhaps walked away from you and they regret it. They're thinking about an ending that they feel perhaps at some point they wanted to be the end and there was never any closure. They feel like it truly wasn't the end, that they can't let go of you and they want healing they'd like to bring some balance and some stability and some hope back to this connection they're trying to remain patient and to have faith that things are going to improve that if they came forward you would be open to speaking to them but they are of two minds about this. Is it too late? Can I come forward? A bit conflicted. So yes, they've been thinking about you quite a bit. They may have shed tears over this. And we got like the fire of the temperance, Sagittarius, and then we have these tears. It's like expressing and feeling their emotions, maybe after a time of ignoring them that old wound that was festering is being infected is impossible to ignore because it's bleeding into other areas of their life we have water and fire we have Scorpio with death and Aquarius and air It's a lot of 
uh, page energy, so it feels like they were being quite immature in the past, not offering any vulnerability, not being open with their feelings, being quite closed off. Perhaps they were in for a good time, not a long time, and yet there was something deeper here that they can't ignore. Your thoughts of you today, the Ten of Wands in the reverse, the Lovers, the Six of Wands, The Mother of Swords. That would be the Queen of Swords. Let me grab that card. And the card that flew out, the Six of Cups. The High Priestess. The Fool. The Four of Wands in the Reverse. The Hierophant in the Reverse and on the bottom of the deck, the Sun or the Knight of Swords. So they are planning on communi communicating with you. They're keeping this secret. I don't think they've said anything to you for a while. There's probably been a no contact here. They aren't ready for any commitment, I don't think, at this time. I don't think they have the capacity for it. They might have a lot going on in their life. They might at least fear that they don't have the capability of committing, even if that's something that they wanted. There's a lot of fear around commitment. But there's also this recognition that they have feelings for you, that they feel a soul bond to you, or if that's not something that they would say or think, they feel this familiarity like you're home, like you're someone that has to be in their life. So they need to rectify things. They want to take a leap of faith. They want to go towards their heart where their heart is calling them, and that's calling them towards you. They're feeling very attracted to you, very physically attracted. There's been some weight here. There's been a burden that they want to lift. With the Ten of Wands, they felt very weighed down, and they may have felt that they weighed you down, and that this had a lot of turmoil or conflict at one point, and they want to ease that pain. If they caused you pain, I think they want to um, heal that bond between the two of you. And they absolutely want to communicate with you. There's a lot I think that they want to say, but that might also include that they're not ready for anything too serious or committed, that if they were to connect with you, they would absolutely have to move slowly. And I think that they know that you would insist on that given any broken trust, any previous behavior that blindsided you, that was confusing and hurtful. Let's get some oracle cards. What are they thinking of you today? Let me clear this out. Let's see. Appreciation, Moon and Leo. Toil and labor. Effulgence. Missing you. Their life feels empty without you. They miss you more than words can say, but they think it's too late to fix things.
Jumping up to the elephant. <clears throat> High honor. Okay, I'm going to stop there for now. So with the high honor and the work, like I feel like this person <clears throat> is thinking about how hard you work, that you're somebody who maybe doesn't have a whole lot of support around you and that you are constantly having to, to work and to take care of everything around you. If you're a parent, you have to do this perhaps on your own. If you're in school, you're probably paying for it on your own or with loans. It's like you probably have a lot going on and they respect this. I think they want to, to tell you how much they respect you and admire you. They appreciate you. This card can be talking about how they see you have a lot of admirers outside of them. Um, they see you as somebody very creative, as very uh, self-expressive, as somebody unique. With Effulgence, this is Victorian slang, my Victorian slang deck. And being up to the elephant, they see you as someone very attractive, as like the whole package the whole nine yards. Effulgence is like radiating um, rays of light as somebody who's exuding rays of light, somebody very bright. So this is how they see you and they're thinking ab about the way that you look to them, like envisioning you, what they miss about you, wondering if it's too late to fix things. Um, admiring you I think from a distance and maybe seeing other people admire you so wondering if you're still even available to them they might also be thinking about theater so you might be in theater you might be an actor or you could be you could express yourself in some way you could be an artist or a creator of some sort and so they might be watching you from a distance and admiring the art that you make or seeing you in the theater or something like this. Hmm. They feel a emotionally an emotional dependency on you. Like there's a bit of a codependency here. Even if you haven't seen them in a while, they feel like they need to see you. They feel like you or your feelings towards them kind of validate and um, give them a feeling of security. And if they feel that they've hurt you and that you're closed off, then this wounds them. That wound is like completely festering because they may have blocked you or self-sabotaged and in this space, they've finally had to, to face these feelings. And so that pain feels a lot harder. It feels a lot more painful than it would have at the beginning. And so some more cards. I have the Akashic Library. The King of Keys. Primal, connecting deep within, sacred dance, instinct. So in the Akashic Tarot, the keys are representative of wealth, um, abundance, career, confidence, power. So it makes me think of the pinnacles. So this is similar to the king of uh, pinnacles. And 
I feel like they're thinking at this time, they're thinking today about business, they're thinking about their finances and how that could affect their ability to come towards you, or perhaps waiting for the right time to come towards you when they feel that they can take you out, uh, pay for your dinner, pay for your drinks, <clears throat> Maybe pay for your babysitter if you have a child, like wanting to take care of you. I feel like even if they are a bit wary of commitment or avoidant, there's also this thought of what it would be like to commit, this thought of what it would be like to protect you and to take care of you and to be the, if this is a man, be the father, be the father figure. And if it's not, there's still this kind of a leader quality to this person wanting to take care of business and wanting to provide, wanting to be there for you. Uh, the Akashic Library could be talking about a book. You could be a writer. They could be a writer. If you are a writer, then they're looking back on things that you have written if you have published a book, they might be looking at this. If they are a writer, they might be writing about you. Both of you could be. This could also be talking about moving into a deeper state of awareness, higher self-awareness, and having a new perspective about you, understanding you better, a new perspective about where you fit into their life, because I feel like this person understands themselves better. They understand their triggers. They understand their past behavior, their fear, their um, old conditioning. They're more self-aware now. And they're determined to do something here. They're just determined to manifest what they want. And that is, I think, a reunion with you. They're looking deep within them at their own instincts, um, their own desires as well. I think they could be doing rituals or dance or maybe even trying um, like peyote or something like that to connect more to their primal instincts. And I think this is because they felt very disembodied before and they felt like they were living in fear. And so they're trying to be less um, high strung, less high strung, less conditioned, like deconstructing their sense of self that I think had been convoluted by stories that they had retained from other people, parents, teachers, um, bosses, friends, and getting back to a more authentic sense of self. So let me get some messages for you, pile one. There's a need for rest for you. Taking a look at any fears that you have and surrender, releasing control. Whoops. Not needing to know every detail of the outcome. I have this card, Love Life. The basis of your question involves your romantic life, which is now changing for the better. Goodbye to the old, hello to the new. You've finished one part of your life and now a new and even better part is beginning. So things are looking up for you. 
being able to surrender a native for control and to take a look at what your fears are, any areas where you might be avoidant or avoiding your pain, especially if it's been a while and you're feeling quite drained and being able to just be there for yourself and give yourself rest. From the affirmators, I have solidarity. I respect the power of solidarity and look for opportunities to unleash it when a loved one has to do something tough. I'll heed their often silent but sometimes loud and whiny call and participate in the toughness with them. Everything is easier when a partner, cohort, sidekick joins you. The only thing that's not easier is feeling resentment, which I suppose is the overall point. I think you're both going to be learning, or you have been learning, how to not blame each other for your triggers and for the pain that you've been going through. I think that you've both been evolving and healing from old childhood wounds and karma. I think that if you want this person in your life, you're learning how to let go of resentments and to move forward and not dwell on the past and that may be something that they're doing as well I think that there might be something about wounds within you as well that had been festering and causing more pain because they had been overlooked or there had been bandages placed upon them to avoid looking at them deeply and so if that resonates it's something that both of you are learning how to take accountability and move through. And then from the True Love Oracle Forgiveness number 14. So I'm going to read from the book for that. Where is it? So it says here, I forgive myself. I am forgiven. Speaking of forgiveness, number 14, it says, When you forgive yourself and others, you create more space for light and love to flow in. The quickest and simplest way to reconnect with your greater sense of personal worth and let more love into your life is to forgive yourself completely. You don't even have to know what you are forgiving yourself for. The angels understand that feeling guilty about a whole array of things has been an ongoing part of our lives and now they say it's time to let that go. Yeah, if you, as you forgive this person or you forgive other people in your life or you at least let go of resentment that might be allowing you to forgive certain things that you've done as well the strange thing about guilt is that you can carry it without even realizing it and it is often about trivial or long forgotten events as you repeat the mantra below the vibration of these beautiful words will flow through you forgiveness is synonymous with love acceptance, nurturing, and spiritual maturity because in reality, none of these energies are separate from one another. They all work together. The uplifting vibration gently and gradually dissolves all the guilt and self-blame you might have stored in your physical cells, your chakras, and your energy field or aura. Letting go of these old energies is a relief, and as this darkness disappears, it creates space for more light and love to flow in. So the more you use this mantra, the lighter and brighter you will feel, literally. Most people think that forgiveness is about forgiving someone else, but when you start with self-forgiveness, you quickly feel more lovable and find it much easier to accept others and forgive willingly when you need to. This creates space in your life for more joy and deeper personal connections. And that's true. Part of maybe releasing pain and resentment towards someone has to begin with releasing this towards yourself and having more love and forgiveness and acceptance and compassion for yourself mm -hmm. um, let me get one of these stressless cards breathe ten times Close your eyes, breathe 10 times in and out, concentrate. Imagine when you breathe in that it reaches all the way to your pelvis and lifts up your abdomen. 
When breathing out, let the air come all the way from the lower abdomen and pelvis. And do this 10 times slowly. You can count the times in your mind. Stress makes us breathe shallowly with our diaphragm and only the chest and top of our lungs. This way the body isn't getting enough oxygen and it is tense, which affects our personal strength. Okay, so some tiles. C F H A D K S I N T O Hafiz. Have you heard of the poet Hafiz? Beautiful poet. You might want to read some of his poetry. You might have some more messages in there. Um, we don't have an E, but I'm hearing Duke. Maybe Duke University or the name Duke. I had a dog named Duke. Something about had, had you. Somebody had you and they dropped the ball perhaps. Kid, someone might have a kid. Things that were said and left unsaid. So, names I'm hearing Haley, Freya, Flynn, Alan, Alyssa, um, Darren, Diana. Amelia, Uma, Ulysses, which is makes me think of the book Ulysses, Sarah, Shawnee, um, Sal, yeah, and that's it, I think. And for Astrodice, I have, um, what is this? Gemini, Libra, and Taurus. I always almost say Pisces. Pisces and Gemini makes me up sometimes. Gemini, Libra, and Taurus. So I'm going to end it there. I hope that that resonated. I'd love to hear from you in the comments, and I will talk to you next time. Bye. Hey, Pile 2. So you picked the rune Uruz and the card number 13, Architect of the Unseen. So first with this rune, this could be talking about a thunderstorm or rain. There might be something that feels like a storm in your life, but the rain makes me think of cleansing. This is also recognizing that you can't rest against the forces that have entered your life. Um, trying to have determination and um, perspective and wisdom when you move forward through a storm. Using your efforts to perhaps support and your wisdom to support these changes taking place perhaps within you and outside of you. This could be a very impactful time for you, a lot of chaos or frantic energy around you. And it could be easy to be overwhelmed and to quit or to give up on certain things. And I think this is asking you 
to move forward, but to do so with thoughtfulness and with a sense of fluidity. There's no need to to force your way through this storm or to fight or to um, to work too hard even. There might be some storm within you, this storm of emotions, feeling too controlling or too pushy, your emotions feeling very active, and this could have prevented understanding with another person, perhaps this person that we're channeling today. This could have maybe brought up old wounds or insecurity, a feeling of misunderstanding with someone. But this can also be an opportunity to implement plans and to use inner strength to overcome problems. So using your inner strength and your wisdom and this doesn't mean like forcing things to happen, but to have determination in your vision and persevere and to believe in yourself and what you're capable of achieving. Architect of the unseen. When an architect is coming up with an idea and designing a plan that's unique and different and has never been seen before, they can get a lot of naysayers. This is the same for inventors, for scientists, for artists who come up with a new idea. Now perhaps that's something that resonates with you. This also feels like something that might resonate with the person on your mind. I think they have been trying to actually manifest you. And this might be something that was unfamiliar territory. You might be someone different than anyone that they had been with before. And so they may have even been dealing with the conflict around them and within them, telling them that this was impossible, that this was too different, perhaps their own expectations or those of people around them were clashing with the opportunity that they had with you. But I feel like they are at this time today, their thoughts are centered around manifesting you. They have possibly been studying manifestation or mysticism or the occult. They might be into Neville Goddard and Eckhart Tolle and Timothy Leary and um, different forms of higher consciousness and awakening and becoming more authentic within themselves and understanding what it is that they want their life to look like, designing their life from the inside out, shifting their mindset. And that's something that I think they've been working on probably for a while. Maybe careful study and practice to learn how to manifest and harnessing their own natural skills, waiting for the right time to come forward perhaps, aligning their willpower uh, with their mindset, their internal programming, any negative programming or conditioning that has been stopping them, any toxic attachments that they've had. The candle just went out. So I wouldn't put too much meaning into the candle going out. I did have it on this tea light for a few different piles, but perhaps it did feel like a flame had gone out between the two of you. I think this person is work working on having focus and faith, faith in what they're capable of succeeding and creating in, creating and a controlled imagination, being able to use their imagination for good and not for constant overthinking and worry and stress about everything that could go wrong, which is something that they may have done in the past. 
they feel like you're meant to be that you're meant to be together I think and they're bringing their thoughts and feelings into alignment with their desires for you becoming aware of what they are thinking and how their mood is influencing their surrounding circumstances they know like uh, Neville Goddard said the world is yourself pushed out and I think that that is something that is on their mind this recognition that their own thoughts could have led to an ending or a conflict or some sort of uh, rocky experience between the two of you so are they thinking about you I do think so but let's take a look at the tarot and see what the tarot has to say. Pile two, person on your mind. Are they thinking of you today? Are you on their mind? The father of cups. That's the king of cups. The world in the reverse. The Sun of Wands or the Knight of Wands. The Tower. The Empress in the Reverse. And the Six of Pentacles, and then on the bottom of the deck, the Seven of Wands. Hmm, I think for sure they are thinking of you. They're thinking about how they have feelings for you. They don't want to have an ending here. If there's been an ending, they still are holding on to you. I think that this person feels that you're closed off to them right now, that you are probably focused on yourself and they want to bring this feeling of reciprocity into this connection they're also feeling very passionate towards you right now they may be thinking about um, fantasies and like what they would like to do if they could be with you alone if you were open to them if they could get you to open up to them again and for some of you, I wonder if this is someone that you had a long-term partnership with or if this is somebody who you were married to. It just feels like someone who either you're married to or you were married to. There feels like a deep bond here. Now, if it wasn't marriage, they are thinking about that or they're thinking about commitment. We have Taurus energy here and fixed signs, Leo, Aquarius, Taurus, Scorpio. Scorpio with the Taurus, I mean, the Scorpio with the tower in Aries. It's a feeling of chaos, like they're very triggered by this, or they were, and that could have led to some chaos that could have led to disagreement like you two were not seeing eye to eye. There could have been some ego getting in the way, some pride on both sides, perhaps. I think that you might be quite defensive towards this person and maybe rightly so. And you can flip the energy if you need to, but it feels like there's a defensiveness here. You're protecting yourself. Um, and they sense this, they know this, they're thinking about it. They could have been very defensive as well. They could have been trying to protect themselves from getting too close to you, from losing themselves in you. Um, but there's this recognition of feelings here, deep feelings, and wanting to maybe communicate them, to be more open, to be more mature. there's a lot of physical attraction and there's also a lot of feelings 
mean, it feels like unconditional feelings here. And they're going through an ego death. So I think that they're also maybe closed off because they're going through some sort of turmoil within their life. Maybe they had been holding on to something else and it felt like it was stable, it felt practical, it felt significant, and yet there, it was on a shaky ground. The foundation was shaky, it was fragile, and so that is kind of crumbling around them, that sense of stability, whatever that was. That could have been their career, that could have been another partner. They want to bring a balance here, they want reciprocity, so they are thinking of you. Maybe they're worried that you don't think about them anymore. And they have the Eight of Swords in the reverse. I think this person was stuck in a mental prison and they had been like the universe had been pushing for them to change and to transform and to let go of things, to let go of this illusion that they had been holding on to or things that they had outgrown and they had resisted it. But I think they are breaking free of that mental prison. Ten of Swords, there's an ending here. And this bowl, there's swords in the back of this bowl. So again, that Taurus it could have been an ending and you've let go of this. The High Priestess, there's a no contact. Um, most of you, I don't think, are speaking with this person. The High Priestess is connected to Divine Feminine and the Empress is Divine Feminine. We got Cancer and Taurus, both Venusian. This is both ruled by Venus. Divine feminine energy. Being able to also smell BS, like being a good BS detector, being very intuitive. You're over here sitting in your own power and perhaps closed off to them because you felt that they were bringing you down that they were not seeing your value, that they were overlooking you and they were treating you like a page when you are a princess. You are, no, you're the empress. You're the high priestess. You contain multitudes and they were seeing this one dimensional being, the fool. The moon. The Ten of Pentacles in the reverse, and on the bottom of the deck, Judgment in the reverse. So this person's going through a lot of karma right now. I think they want a new beginning, but there's a big rift between the two of you. There's a lot that has not been said, a lot of secrets perhaps, a lot that they didn't say about their feelings, maybe about a betrayal for some of you. It feels like something that was very stable. So a partnership, a marriage, perhaps something that had a great deal of, um, what's the word, possibility, something that had a lot of potential because of a soul bond, a soul contract here was broken. And so there's a big disconnect between the two of you and this person is feeling that pain there's getting more clarity i think but they may also be still heavily in fear and so there's this kind of a disconnect within this person as well this fragmenting what they want to do and what they're trying to do and this wanting to take a leap of faith and manifesting you, trying to get unstuck, trying to build something authentic, but still moving through karma. This person's going through an awakening and they're reaping what they've sown. They need to take accountability, perhaps feeling haunted by you, 
gain, gaining a new perspective, wanting to gain forgiveness, and you can flip it again, flip the energy if you need to, but they're in the middle of it. They're like in the middle of this timeline and you could be coming to this reading at a different point in this timeline if it's been a very long time since you've spoken to them. Maybe they're further along in this healing journey. Maybe they've gained more perspective. I think that they've caused you quite a bit of pain though and they're hiding or they've stayed hidden for some time because of this, this guilt, this feeling of shame, and this fear. And honestly, I think you're protected. I think you're protected from spirit as they move through this healing journey and as they go through karma. It's not your karma to take on, it's theirs. I think you've probably already been through a lot of karma. And on the bottom of that, Oh, so this is the Eight of Pentacles. I don't. I think I said the Ten of Pentacles. Eight of Pentacles in the reverse. And then the Ten of Pentacles upright. So there is this potential for union. And they were not putting effort into this. They weren't putting effort into building something with you. This beautiful spider's web. They weren't putting effort into creating together in this reciprocity. But there is this potential for coming back together, for building a home together, a relationship, something long lasting, a family, bringing two families together perhaps, but it feels like something that is delayed, something that is going to take time as they work through their own illusions, as they work through being able to see clearly what it is that they could create with you. And I think that they're working through that. Other, under that is the Mother of Pinnacles, and this is a very stable, very down-to-earth energy. Earth energy again, Capricorn, Virgo, Taurus, someone who's very nurturing, um, dependable, loyal, abundant someone who's um, very connected to their sense of worth and a good partner, somebody who's very down to earth, very natural, very grounded. Hmm. So let me get some oracle cards. What else are they thinking of you today? I have inheritance, concern, Chuckaboo. This is from my Victorian sling deck. Love conquers all. Enduring loyalty, eternal love, lasting commitment. They, they're thinking about how loyal you are. What a good friend you have been to them. Or what a good friend you were to them. If they cut you out of their life, then they miss you. They miss how dependable and loyal you were. They feel this lasting, this kind of soulmate bond to you that regardless of the space or the time that they feel very connected to you. They might be concerned, concerned for you if they haven't seen you or heard from you in a while. We're just kind of concerned about this connection between the two of you. So this is um, Saturn in Scorpio. This is about ambition, self-control, regeneration, wanting to regenerate something here. There might be a fear that you are harboring a deep resentment and brooding over this, that you're um, that you feel that you've been mistreated or betrayed and that you will never forgive them. You know, flip the energy if you need to. They may also be thinking about um, 
finances. Is they could have gotten an inheritance from a family member, or you may have. And they would have to be able to see you from a distance to know that. But they might have money coming in from family, from someone who has passed, so that's a possibility. And they might feel that they have more stability now to come forward and to manifest something with you. This could also be talking about property and like wanting to build something together, wanting to leave a legacy together, that Ten of Pentacles. Let's get some more cards. Discipline. So in manifesting, having that focus, having that controlled creativity and imagination, being able to consistently work on their mindset and maybe meditating and doing um, affirmations or making diff different shifts within their lifestyle, um, disconnecting from certain toxic people perhaps and addictions in order to have discipline, in order to create the external reality that they want. First, it's having that practice and that discipline to shift their own mindset. Hilarion, number five. And the King of Roses from the Akashic Tarot. Okay, so... Hilarion is number five here, and that's to me connected to the Hierophant. And the Hierophant is Taurus energy again, that is um, being able to tap into commitment, to values, to study. I think they're taking on more maturity and discipline within their life. And you can see kind of these spirits back here as well. So I wonder if they're feeling very haunted by you at this time and the family that they could have created with you if they had not been so caught up in their ego or their pride. Hilarion is a powerful ascended master and very connected to the information of the Akashic Records, a master of research, of science, of healing, of the logical mind, of spirit communication. So this is somebody who could be very learned, like someone who's spent a lot of time in academia, someone who's well studied, like well read, Somebody who's also very intuitive, so very logical and analytical, but also quite intuitive. And someone who takes their goals and their pursuits very seriously. They focus and hone in on something and they work their ass off until they bring that into reality. And I think maybe in the past they did that mostly with their career. They did that maybe with um, little romantic trysts you're like I'm gonna get that person because I'm attracted to them but this is like connected with their soul they feel this soul bond here so they're this is something that feels very deep as well they're trying to manifest something that feels very deep that feels like a very soul oriented bond that they may have felt from a past life if they believe in that They're finding clarity, they're finding direction, and maybe support in order to bring something into harmony here and to try to rectify a connection. The King of Roses, the King of Roses, right? The King of Roses is similar to the King of Cups. The roses in this deck um, 
some belief they're connected to your emotions, to family, to relationships, to personal and inner conflicts, and to communities. There's, yeah, there's this uh, man holding two roses, a red and a white one. So this is kind of talking about the passion versus the inner mind and that soul bond, that purity of the soul. So what did we have here before? I was talking about something like this. The Father of Cups. So the King of Roses, Father of Cups. And then we had the Knight of Wands. And it's like the, the red and the white rose, the purity, the passion, the father of cups, the knight of wands, feeling very physically attracted, wanting to rush in perhaps, and then wanting to take their time and fill up their cup, fill up this cup of love between the two of you, maybe build up a friendship, build up trust, build up harmony, and then to drink it up at the right appropriate time to drink up this cup, to savor this union when you're open to them, when that trust has been built up again, when there's this sense of balance and reciprocity and understanding and things have been healed. Recognizing that they need healing and they need to be creative coming forward. This is a king of love and of balance and maturity and being well-rounded, but I think it's taken them quite some time and it's still for a lot of you, something they're still going through is finding that balance. But there's this intention to build up a friendship, an intention to perhaps have something stable and romantic and long-lasting moving forward. There's an intention to create a happy home and a family. There's a lot of feelings of love and compassion, which is a good place to start. And it feels like they're actually doing the work or they are in the process of doing the work. We have the Eight of Pentacles in the reverse, but we also have discipline. So there's a lot of thought and perhaps a little stagnancy in their own emotional blockages, but something I think that they're working through. I also feel like they're dealing with a lot. On, there's a lot on their plate. So this inheritance could be that step forward to have the freedom and the time and the ease of mind to come forward. I have distant horizons here, so it could, again, be some time before you hear from them. Fairy tale, they think this kind of love only happens in fairy tale stories because to them you are too perfect to believe it's true. Naturalist, this person could be very connected to the outdoors and to nature and to botany. And that may be something you two have co in common. Overflow, their heart is overflowing with love so much it scares them because their love for you has no end. And choices, there is a choice they have to make. They know time is not on their side and risk losing you forever if they don't. Let me get some messages for you. the gym gratitude Let's see humor levity laughter is the best legal medicine Oh, interesting. So we have humor and levity. And it looks looks like it's time for you to take a sweet, sweet hit of it. When someone annoys you or a plan goes awry, 
to find something funny in there, and if you ever feel like the butt of the joke, remember that the only difference between someone laughing at you and someone laughing with you is that in the first version you're not laughing. You always have the option, so opt to lighten up. It's legal in almost 200 countries. Yeah, so maybe there's a need for you to... Also, I said they were kind of high strung and they were like trying to loosen up. Maybe there's a need for you to do that as well. Maybe watch a comedy show or a romantic comedy that you love. Maybe connect with a friend that makes you laugh and to lighten up. And having gratitude, being thankful for this life and the opportunities that you've had and for this experience, maybe in space, in time with yourself, you've built more compassion and love for yourself, more independence, more f- a feeling of freedom and acceptance with going with the flow of life and all that life has to offer you with and without someone by your side. You can learn a lot about yourself and gain wisdom loyalty. I'm there for the people I care about in whatever way they need me. Ride to the airport? No problem. Bail you out of jail? You bet. Go see your band again? Maybe. The point is when I stand with them, I know I'm a part of something special and to be honest, it doesn't suck to look around and remember they're standing with me too. I have a show the world, the real you, full moon in Aquarius. Oh, and the gym. I didn't even talk about that, so let's talk about that first. So I love this. This makes me think of Bridgerton again and like the diamond of the season. You're a fucking diamond. You're a treasure. There's something rare and unique about you. You have a talent. You have a gift. You have a way of being and living and seeing the world and seeing through BS. You're the fucking empress, remember? You're the high priestess and the empress. And you probably stand out from the crowd, whether you like it or not. You've probably worked through your own insecurities. You've had these worms around you. You've been maybe jealous of you or tried to have a bit of your light and your shine and maybe felt weighed down by that. Perhaps this person was triggered by you because they saw something that they could love and also something that could leave them or hurt them. There was that sense of loss before they even committed to you, perhaps. I think that they saw this this gem, this treasure that was you before maybe even you saw it. And so there may have been a need for space for you to cultivate self-love and acceptance and to recognize this diamond that you were. So whatever distance or misunderstanding or fear was present between the two of you, I think that spirit really wants you to recognize how special you are, how unique, how light and healing and regenerative and irreplaceable you are and to work past your own feelings of grasping and needing control or envy or comparison with others because whatever you are, however you look, whatever you have to offer, it is rare and it is beautiful. And I think your destiny is unique as well. And perhaps that is going to be with this person. There's something rare here, something really unique. And there's a sense of destiny and like true purpose. And then we have show the world the real you, full moon in Aquarius. And adjustments are required, third quarter moon. So I'm not an astrology buff and I can't even tell you what the third quarter moon means and I could look in the book but I do think that this is asking you to make certain adjustments in your life maybe decluttering your home making space for love if that's something that you want I think that this person is making a lot of adjustments as well 
and being your true self because you're this fucking diamond here you're a gem so allowing yourself to just be authentic and i think you are to a great extent but there feels like with the empress in the reverse and the high priestess a lot that you might keep hidden you might keep a lot of your talents and ideas to yourself and feel well nobody will appreciate them so i'm just going to keep this to myself but like goddess sophia you have this immense wisdom to you you have this truth this hidden knowledge and so being able to express that more and to just be authentic in every moment with everyone as much as you can allow yourself to be full moon in aquarius is august 19th this year so that could be significant the next full moon from when i film this is the full moon in capricorn on the 21st of july and then there's full moon in aquarius on um on august 19th so that could be a important time for you and maybe reconnecting with this person and soak in a bath so I think you need to maybe take some time for self-care, taking a hot bath. I spent all winter, I think December, all winter break, part of January, taking a bath every night with a cup of tea and a face mask because I got all these different face masks from Target, it was like a set, um, and with bath salts. And I haven't really done anything like that since, and I miss it. So maybe you need to do something like that. Put up a bunch of candles and crystals. Maybe plan a vacation. Time to get out of town. That could be a day trip. That could be a road trip. That could be going to Scotland. I always say Scotland because that's where I, I really need to get out and go there. <laughs> ah, perfect. Express your individuality. Allow your true self to shine because you're awesome. So... A lot of really clear messages for you today and then I have number 22 manifestation Wow so this whole pile has just had a lot of confirmations we've been talking about this from the beginning I'm gonna read this from the book number 22 <clears throat> It's easy to connect with the energy of all that is available to you in the universe. There are many times in life when we wish we could manifest a specific item, situation, or even person. Many people know how to visualize what they want, but how often do they consider the quality of the vibration or frequency they are emanating? If you are trying to manifest something but your chakras are out of alignment and not working together. This can create an energy that blocks whatever it is you wish to attract. The following heart manifestation balance helps you bring your heart, solar plexus, and navel chakras into alignment so that your energy can work for you. It's so simple. Your heart chakra represents your heart's desires and intuition. Your solar plexus chakra represents your sense of self material reality and your gut instincts and your navel chakra represents your creativity fertility and ability to manifest once you have located these three powerful energy centers at the center of your chest the center of your midriff and just below your navel simply imagine a flow of energy and light moving through and connecting the three of them in a figure eight configuration when you begin, it may be difficult to visualize or feel anything. The figure eight may feel heavy or sluggish or weak and watery. In its healthy state, this energy connection will be rich in a beautiful bright color and feel like a strong, even flow pulsing up and down through the figure eight shape. Placing your hands on any of these three chakras may help you feel the energy and closing your eyes can make it easier to sense the clear, bright color emerging in your heart manifestation connection. Once you have a feel for the energy pulsing up and down smoothly, you can add the final ingredient of this practice. Focus on what it is you would like to manifest. 
This is a great balance to do as you are lying in bed. Morning or evening is fine. You can start your day by tuning into your heart's desires or drift off to sleep while connecting to all that is available to you in the universe. And remember your intention and willingness are the most important factors. So even if you don't feel or see much, be sure to persevere. <gasps> Beautiful. I believe I was talking to you about perseverance. And I was talking about manifestation at the very beginning. And I think this is something you're both doing. Maybe you're manifesting each other or you're manifesting this maybe reunion or this potential after some false starts, perhaps. There's a deep connection between the two of you and the 5D. And I do this every night where I will listen to meditations. I will meditate. I will connect to my body, to my heart, and to those that I love. And so you can do this in the morning. You can do this as you drift off to sleep. Being in alignment with your own body, being fully embodied within yourself, and also connecting with those that you love or a specific person, this person. Sunflowers are a sign of happiness, of rebirth, of harmony, of abundance. I'm going to get you one of these stressless cards. Pay close interest. Pay interest to your body or your surroundings for a minute. Instead of placing a good or bad label on things, try to think of them as interesting, like looking at a painting with lots of details. When you begin to label things around you, turn it around and just call it interesting. When you stop labeling things, your mind is free and vigilant. When you feel these feelings, you will feel peace, which reduces stress from the body and mind. Stress often causes negative thinking, which causes stress. Non-labeling will stop this vicious circle. And it is that cycle that blocks your manifestations as well. So, some tiles. O N R H I W A U C A K F. We don't have an E, but I'm thinking of home. You might feel like home. It also makes me think of Homer. I know we don't have an E, but this looks like an E from the Iliad, not from the Simpsons. So, yeah, the Odyssey, the Iliad, that could be significant. Let's see. Air, needing air, needing to breathe. Something about hair, maybe you love their hair or they love your hair. I'm picturing really soft hair or wavy hair, car, maybe you love their car, or vice versa. So for names, I'm hearing Cam, Cameron. Oh, and then we have war. This could have felt like conflict or war at some point. Carrie, Callie, Colin. Kirsten, Caitlin, Kyle, Kate, Fred, Freddy, Frankie, um, Olivia, Olive, Oscar, India, Ian, Inez, Harriet, Haley, Helen, Margot, 
Mike, Matt, Molly, Mackenzie, Will, Wes, lots of names coming through for pile two. Far, something feels far away, somebody feels far away. Family, a feeling of family, feeling familiarity. I'm just going to leave this here. <laughs> Fantasies. Maybe you feel like they're rock, or you did at one point, or vice versa. I do feel that there was a lot of trust between the two of you at one point. So, yeah. I think I'm going to get some Astro Dice and then end it there. I have Scorpio, so we had that come out a few times. Um, Gemini, that keeps coming out a lot lately, and Aries, so I'm going to end it there, I hope that resonated, and I will talk to you next time, oh, and if you want to leave a message or a comment, I always love to hear them, so yeah, I hope that resonated, and I will talk to you next time, bye. Okay, Pile 3, you picked number 18, Floating in the Storm. This card feels very chaotic, uh, angry a little bit, fiery. I think that this person is realizing that they are, that they don't have control over you. They may have tried to control you or manipulate you. I think for some of you, this might even not be romantic. Some of you, this is an ex-partner. Some of you, this feels like it's a friend or an ex-friend or something. Or this could be a current partner, but it feels like somebody who is realizing they don't have control over you or over everything especially somebody else's feelings or somebody else's behavior and they also don't have control over their own heart and what they love they're learning to maybe surrender to this storm consciously trying to connect more to their sense of purpose realizing that they can't even control their own destiny or the forces of nature as the wind blows or how long the storm is going to last and so they're letting go they're just surrendering to this process they may be, have been trying to like control your behavior your feelings um, control people around them around the two of you this feels very toxic um, they could have been trolling you or toxic in some way, rigid, hypercritical. They're taking a look at their past behavior, thinking about the connection between the two of you and how they were acting, and then looking at current circumstances and perhaps taking more accountability. And this rune that we have here is Hagala's. And this is talking about uncontrolled forces and powers again. This could be also the manifestation of the unconscious, a complete break. This is a rune of destruction and divine punishment and karma and death and ending. Uncontrolled external forces the tower, this feels like the tower, ego death perhaps, or karma just crumbling, a sense of uh, pride and stability, 
and abundance. Somebody had plans here and maybe they were being manipulative. Maybe they were being very controlling and those plans are interfered with. Those plans are not working out for them and they're getting to a point where they need to accept that. There could have been obstacles here, uh, a failure between the two of you, something failed, a heartbreak, a breakup, an ending, maybe you needed space. They're trying to trust their intuition, I think, or trusting that their gut I feel like this person would say their gut. Trying to be decisive. Trying to prepare for any unpleasantness moving forward, unpleasant surprises. So this is a different, a little different than the last two piles. Let's take a look at the tarot and see if they're thinking about you today. If you're on their mind today. Pile three, are you on this person's mind? I have the Sun of Pentacles, that's the Knight, the Knight of Pentacles in the reverse. I have the Five of Swords. The Three of Swords in the reverse. The Ace of Pentacles in the reverse. The Six of Cups. Okay. The Father of Swords. The King of Swords. And on the bottom of the deck is the Wheel of Fortune. They, yeah, they are definitely thinking about you. There could have been an ending, some heartbreak, disappointment here for sure. I think they're thinking about that. They're thinking about how they may have caused some heartbreak or you may have left them and they're feeling heartbroken. There's a feeling of depression. There could have been a third party and that third party could have been another person. That could have been an addiction. It does feel like there's some chaos in this person's mind, so they could be addicted to something, or they could have been. It also feels like anger, a temper. Um, I just keep hearing chaos, a storm brewing within them, a lot of conflict in their mind. I think they miss you. I think they have love for you, but it feels clouded or convoluted by resentment by anger, by that control that they're trying to let go of, they're gaining a different perspective and they do feel like you're a valuable, special person in their life, that they were lucky to meet you. They're gaining some clarity, but at the same time, I think there's still some resentment. They're going through karma right now and I think they brought that onto themselves. They're having a lot of unexpected changes that are uncomfortable, that are um, making them feel unbalanced, uneasy. I've got fixed signs here, Taurus, Leo, Scorpio, Aquarius, and the Wheel of Fortune is ruled by Jupiter, which is connected to Sagittarius in the ninth house, higher learning, travel, philosophy. They're trying to, I think, learn more about you and about themselves and about why their mind is like this. It feels like some mental health issues as well. And I think that they're incapable at this time, or maybe they have never been capable of being consistent, of being patient of putting in the work that they need to put in to have what they want. So this person has a lot of conflict within them and they create conflict and drama outside of themselves. 
And I think nobody wins from this. You don't win, they don't win. All you can do is take a step back and get space, get peace. And they continue to fight, they fight themselves as you create distance from this person. They may realize that they've been fighting this battle by themselves for a while because they might be trying to incite drama and trigger you and poke at you or to feel that you still care for them. And I think they do this from a place of ego, even if they think it's love and you're like doing your own thing right now. And maybe that's the clarity that they're gaining, that they've been kind of in a battle with themselves, with their own ego, their own sense of self, and perhaps they've never known quite what that is. This clarity, I think, is understanding how convoluted and ego-bound they were. Feeling bound, bound by their fears, bound by illusion, bound by hope. There's a beautiful side to this person. There's hope, there's love, there's creativity, there's passion, but there's also fear, anger, um, ego, pride, maybe some manipulative tendencies, some narcissistic tendencies, and they realize that you're blocked to them. They're thinking about their desires. They're thinking about their own self-sabotaging ways, their own internal drama. They may have a tendency to play the victim, to even feel within their mind that they are a victim. People are out to get them. It's feeling a paranoia. And then they have these moments of illumination, these moments of clarity where they're like, fuck, I'm not a victim. I'm creating this. But I don't think that those last. Let's see, what are they thinking of you today? We have the Eight of Cups in the reverse. The Daughter of Swords. That would be the Page of Swords. There could be a child here, an air sign, but there doesn't have to be. This could also be something within them, their inner child, taking a look at some of their childhood experiences and know how those might be shaping their own internal drama. Um, I have the Ten of Wands in the reverse. The Ten of Pentacles in the reverse. Judgment. The Father of Pentacles. And the Four of Pentacles in the reverse. This could be somebody that you were married to. This could be the father of a child for some of you. And I think that they're, they're definitely taking some accountability at this time. They might be definitely going through karma, reaping what they've sown, feeling kind of haunted by their own, by you and by their own behavior. They could have been very impulsive, very reckless, very, for some of you, A-B-U-S-I-V-E, uh, very toxic. They're thinking about their past behavior. I think there's been a breakup or a divorce or some sort of ending, a disconnect. And this has been a weight off of both of your shoulders, I'm not going to lie. It feels like this was quite a burden for both of you. I don't think this person was very consistent. 
very capable of having a foundation and being a provider and being a protector. They felt very toxic and confused and conflicted and maybe drama prone and angry perhaps. I don't think they want an ending, but I think this is also like giving them some space to work on themselves. They could be somebody who's used to jumping into one relationship after another. And I think they are needing to work on their inner child and building some sense of consistency and stability within themselves in their own life for themselves. They don't seem capable of being this father of pinnacles before they have worked through their own internal issues. Maybe that's avoidance, of avoiding their own feelings of insecurity, their own wounds, their own fears, their own narcissism. I think that they were holding on to you, kind of blindly holding on to you, and they're maybe having this these thoughts today about how they need to let go how they can't hold on to you especially if you're not there they're holding on to an idea they're holding on to a hope but it's not built on work it's not built on consistency or any solid foundation I feel like getting a few more cards here just a few more to sum it up what they're thinking today Two of Wands. Six of Pentacles. If you have a child with this person, they want to put in more effort. They want to be more consistent. They're also, I think, weighing their options. They may have a lot of other... They may have other children. They might have other responsibilities. They might have bills that they haven't paid. And the Seven of Swords. Okay. So they're still kind of deceptive. They're thinking about things that they could say maybe to win you, win over your trust. But they're being deceptive still. They're still being manipulative. This person, I don't think that they know how to be this Father of Pentacles, but they want so badly to appear like this. They want to look like this stable, consistent, grounded leader, this practical, solid, wise person, father perhaps, husband, parent, um, boss, consistent, boyfriend, I don't know, but they are deceptive because within them they're, they're fragmented. They still don't quite know who they are. And they have karma that they're working through right now. They could have a lot of conflict with other people. Fighting with other people. They want this reciprocity, but this feels like an illusion still. Maybe they're thinking these thoughts, but there's no action behind them. There's no, there's no balance. There's no consistency. I keep hearing that. No foundation. So what are some messages? Actually, just a few more oracle cards for what they're thinking today. On Tinter Hooks. This is from my Victorian Sling deck. It's like they're waiting expectantly to hear from you. They want a sign from you or a message. Taming the beast, you make them putty in your hands. They know their old conquering ways will not work with you. They don't have control over you. You're your own person. You know who you are. They're still very guarded and trapped by, behind their own emotional defenses. Allow them to fall in love in steps. They need to fall in love with themselves. They are aligning to the frequency of love and operating at a high frequency vibration with openness to receiving, I, I don't know, are they? I think they would like to say that, they would like to feel that way. Two of keys, the treasure, that would be like the two of cups. And the ace of keys, the architect. And we had architect of the 
unseen in pile two. Okay, so I feel like my head is getting kind of cloudy from this whole energy that I'm tapping into. If I said the two of roses, I meant the two of keys. If I didn't say it, I was thinking the two of roses, which would be connected to the cups or to more watery like relationships, love. The two of keys, I think, is more connected to the pentacles, to values, to wealth, to success, to abundance, your career, a sense of authority, inner worth, your sense of power and self-worth and inner authority. So the ace and the two of keys could be talking about here there's a man and woman in ancient Egypt dressed like Egyptians around all these um, utensils and old architecture. This person might be building a project or renovating or decorating a home or workplace. It might be something they do for work. They work with their hands or they might work outside. But this is talking about a time when they're trying to step into their own power. They're trying to, I think today especially, they're thinking about their own strengths, their talents, any opportunities that they have with this career, especially if this is something that's new for them. They're trying to learn new skills, perhaps, trying to make more money. I think that they're really trying to gain more self-worth, more self-acceptance, more self-worth, feeling more validated. But I think this is also connected to their ego. This is like external things that they want to validate them. Here we have a man who looks kind of morose, forlorn. He looks dejectedly at this treasure chest. It's all smashed. Makes me think of anger or a temper again. But it looks like this room was robbed. Like things were broken, things were taken. This is talking about loss and disappointment. This person on your mind, whoever they are for you, and it's going to be different for all of you, they're thinking today about disappointment, about loss, maybe losing you, maybe losing a job, losing an opportunity, um, remembering a time in the past when they had more, and maybe if they can get to a place where they're more at peace, and their mind can settle thinking about how this is temporary and trying to think of how they can move past this feeling of loss and disappointment. This chest represents a time when they felt hope, when they felt light, and I think a lot of that was a light from you. And so there's a need to build that light within themselves A few more oracle cards for this person. We've got community. Oops. Seduction, allure, desire, manipulation. The monster within, internal struggle, personal challenges, wanting to improve and caution. Hmm, so Virgo, Mercury and Virgo, or Virgo and Mercury, I always get that mixed up, but it feels like maybe this person's like planning and restructuring their life, trying to get their chaotic life in order, maybe working a lot. They could be trying to restore something, but it's also connected to these cards. We have desire, manipulation, that seven of swords, not afraid to seduce and to manipulate to get what they want. And the monster within, there's this internal struggle, recognizing your worth, feeling this disappointment, wanting to do better, wanting to be the better person, but also 
maybe resorting to old crafty tendencies to toxic strategies to uh, undermining you undermining ways being manipulative but wanting to do better so there's this kind of these two sides to this person Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde is coming out here almost feels kind of schizophrenic and they might be getting help in their community they could be getting help from their boss to become more stable they could be in a um, 12 step program for something if they have addictions they could be seeing a therapist they could be getting help from their family if their family has a tendency to help them out but there's there's a darkness to this person for sure and I think that it controls them to an extent because I don't think they've done a lot of the shadow work that they need to do there's this feeling coming from this person that they want me to talk about the light within them they want me to talk about their hope their love here under that I have the lovers their their desire to do better their compassionate side but to avoid what is very real and very dominant within them which is this ego this anger this desire just like uh makes me want to tense my teeth grit my teeth like this desire to control and to manipulate and to have what they want this greed and this vanity sweated labor they're working hard though i think I think this person does work hard in some ways, especially if it helps kind of shut their mind off. So let me get some messages for you, Pile 3. The river. Judgment, again, we have that card come out here, and that's connected to Libra. The Judgment card can also be talking about a karmic partner. And we have karma with everyone, but a karmic partner is someone who's in our life to help us to evolve, to learn a lesson, to move through karma. It's also talking about gaining perspective, taking accountability, forgiving. It says here, I understand that everyone has their own unique path and challenges. let go as you surrender the need to control your relaxed energy rapidly attracts your desires emotional healing as your heart heals of old emotional pain you receive new blessings and love from the affirmators I have honesty this heralds a wonderful time of rooting yourself in complete and tonal honesty it might seem scary to tell the truth all the time with everyone about everything, but when you practice radical honesty, you can stop hiding and start relaxing. The best part is honesty from you inspires honesty from others. What results is a root and toot and trust parade and everyone's invited except the bagpipe players, but you know they'll show up anyway. And open heartedness. I know that life and the people living in it or living it can be an absolute bummer sometimes, but I promise not to let unhappy chapters make me jaded. If I let negative experiences turn me sour, then the jerks win. So I'll move on with an open and hopeful heart, if only because I hate losing to jerks. Oh, fuck yeah. Some of you have been really hurt by this person, betrayed. Maybe by multiple people. Maybe even like people sense this person. So there's this, the universe wants you to have your heart open because this is not all people. This is not an example of everyone. And I think some of these experiences were needed. They were an opportunity to learn how to have boundaries if that's not something that you learned growing up 
having healthy boundaries, learning to be there for yourself, learning to smell out BS. And I have the energy is gaining momentum, waxing moon. And hold on. your commitment is being tested. I think this is commitment to yourself, to your hope for something like authentic and unconditional and safe and beautiful moving forward, committing to your heart to remain open, to have hope, chanting. I'm not one for chanting myself. I think it makes me feel awkward. <laughs> I guess it depends on where you're at, but I think maybe singing, you might want to sing. You might want to sing in the car, in the shower. Time to clear your energy field. It might be a good time to sage your home, to do a cord cutting meditation, to try to disconnect your energy and cut ties with particular people in your life. Okay, so sex. Some of you might want to, if you have another partner, or maybe even pleasuring yourself, being able to feel pleasure, being able to feel connected to your body, to feel good. Love, uh, I commit to the practice of seeing the good in all things. This could be having love for others, even if they've hurt you, having love for yourself. And then another card of love, number 20, I'm going to read from the book for this one from the true love oracle what does it say we have love twice here so spirit is hitting us over the head with this message love close your eyes and feel the pure raw energy of this creative life force is there any other word in our language that has so many meanings been so overused and misused we long for it and agonize over its absence, but what does love really mean? Yeah, I think this is time to redefine love. To some people, love is about fidelity and loyalty. To some, it's about getting married. To some, it's about sharing. And to others, it's about obligation and what you owe to the people who love you. We use the word and conjure up the idea frequently, yet we shall I have to say, before I keep going, this person could have said, I love you, I love you, many times to you, and then been showing with their actions more hate or more other, you know, anger, control. And so you're perhaps in, solid, in solitude, understanding what true love is by loving yourself. We use the word and conjure up the idea frequently, yet we see shallow expressions of love everywhere around us in media and entertainment. You have drawn this card today because your angels and guides would like you to think about what love really is for you. It is very important for you to make time to contemplate love and how you create more of it in your life. Close your eyes and get into the feeling of love, the pure raw energy of this creative force. This may seem a little abstract at first, but as you allow yourself to feel its presence and merge with its vibration, you will begin to realize something amazing. Love is not confined to human relationships or interactions between living beings. It is the fundamental force that animates and guides the entire universe. Love is in the air we breathe, the water we drink, and this earth we walk upon. Love is quite literally all around and within you. If you would like to attract a loving relationship or improve your existing partnership, you can make a beautiful beginning by going to the source of love first. You need to be sure of love. You need never be sure of love, sorry. <laughs> Tapping into the endless flow of love that infuses every atom within and around you will provide nourishment for your soul and inspiration for your life. When you make time to contemplate love, feel the kind of love you desire and connect with universal love. 
you will be guided every step of the way by the greatest force ever created. Let me get a stress less card. Pick out the positive words. Try as often as possible to pick out words that are positive even if you are stressed and feel negative. Try to think about nice things to say to people in different situations. When interactions make us feel good, it lowers our blood pressure, calms down our heart rate, and reduces the amount of stress hormones in our body. Okay. So some tiles for you. Two peas. Some, at some point, you might have felt like you were two peas in a pod. As Sage, somebody could have tried to keep you quiet from expressing yourself, from being more expressive. W A F I D T R G. I see rad. Somebody might say rad or used to wish maybe there's a wish here that they have for a reunion or something i see dirt so this felt dirt like there was dirt on it it's dirty fit somebody here could exercise or be quite fit they could have a good body they might think you do wit they might think you're quite smart or witty with your words Pit. <laughs> they, they look like Brad Pitt, but there's like a pit, like a darkness, like a, something in the pit of their stomach, fear perhaps. Um, so you might see something else in there that resonates, this felt like it went to shit. So for names I'm hearing, Greg, Russell, Dan, um, Ari, I don't know if that's her name, Abigail, Abby, Anna, Alexa, Perry, Parker, Philip, Paul, um, Daria, David, Tommy, Wilson, Wyatt, Ivan, Iris, uh, Frida, Han, Han Solo. <laughs> Maybe somebody thinks that they're Han Solo or like Han Solo. So for signs today, I have Libra, Capricorn, and Virgo. So I'm going to end it there for you. I would love to hear from you in the comments if this resonated. It really does help with that algorithm. And I would um, love to hear from you if you have a reading recommendation or if you want a personal reading. And I will talk to you next time. Bye. Hey everyone, so if you're sticking around for this little last bonus, I'm going to do a quick yes or no. Four different questions. You can pick four different, you can have four different questions. Pause the video and think of them or have one and pick one area, one card. I'm going to do one card each. So for question number one, yes or no. The Wheel of Fortune. Question number one is yes. This is connected to Jupiter, which is ruled by Sagittarius, or Sagittarius is ruled by Jupiter, forever. Also, fixed signs, Taurus, Leo, Scorpio, Aquarius. This could be talking about unexpected changes in the, in the right direction, things working out, manifesting something that you've been trying to manifest for a while, Feeling like you're going with the flow of the universe. Things are like balancing out for you. 
whether this is love, whether this is your career, your personal development, it feels like things are, the wheel is turning in your favor. They're working out. Pile two is the daughter of Pentacles, so this is also a yes, but it feels like something small, small progress in the right direction, um, small progress down the path that is in alignment with what you want, but it is progress. What about number th two? No, number three, sorry. The hanged man is maybe. This is a maybe. There feels like a pause right now. If this is about another person, I think they're going through a pause to think, to gain perspective. Maybe having a different perspective at this time, but it's taking time. There's feels like a delay. This could be connected to Pisces and to the 12th house, intuition, collective unconscious, mysticism, shadow work, also connected to autumn season. So Pisces season, autumn season could be significant, but this is a maybe. Number four, card four. Strength in the reverse, it's also a, that's actually a no. So yes, yes, maybe no. Doesn't feel like there's a lot of either self-control or emotional balance here. Needing more balance. There might not be enough courage or um, taming of the passions, releasing control. The ego could be too involved with whatever this is. So if you want things to work out in the future, perhaps strength upright is a yes. There needs to be some work here, letting go of control, releasing that need to always know the outcome, finding emotional balance, finding inner strength, taming your own passions perhaps, having faith that things can work out. Maybe this is asking for less tarot readings. Maybe this is asking for um, finding self-control, connecting with your own inner integrity, your own inner authority, sense of fortitude. Okay, so I'm going to end it there. I hope that resonated. And once again, I will see you next time.